next card I have, and this is the last one I have, is Barbara Ellistad. More than a statement, I have a couple questions, if I may. Am I allowed to ask questions? Sure. Okay. The filing indicates that Reliance has an annual shortfall of one million four thousand one hundred and eighteen dollars. The proposed rate changes will provide two hundred and sixty-six thousand one hundred and twenty-six dollars. I'm hoping my numbers are right here. And the difference is the seven thousand three seven hundred thirty-seven thousand nine hundred and ninety-two dollars that uh, Rio Virgin is requesting from the NUSF fund. So I hope I have those numbers right. My question is this to um, Rio Virgin officials. If the request for the $737,000 from the NUSF fund is turned down and not granted, how do you propose to make up the difference if your annual shortfall is just over $1 million a year? Well, I'll start out, and you can keep the microphone. I, can, I think I can speak loudly enough. I mean, the, that's why the request was so important, and, and that's why we made it, because you know, for a regulated telephone company, there are only so many places to get additional funding. And so we think that that fund is, is meant precisely to avoid further rate increases, which, you know, is, like I said, is really one of the only alternatives the company would have. Um, you know, companies can always, as, as uh, I think uh, as Walter pointed out, you know, there are sometimes opportunities to, for companies to scale things back. Sometimes that can mean uh, reductions in service quality, it can mean reductions in service availability. Uh, there are ways that, you know, from a cost perspective, we could attempt to address the situation, but typically what it would mean is rate increases from the further future to meet that number, because the, the target number that you're discussing is the number that we, that we are short under our current calculation presented in the application. So if we don't get the NUSF fund funding, the, the only real alternative is to either get it from the customer or try to scale things back. It's only that's a lot of money. So there would only be so much scaling back that it would be possible there. So I think it's, it's fair to say that it probably would be further rate increases. So this is the first time, if I understand correctly, this is the first time that Rio Virgin has requested any funds from the NUSF fund, is that correct? Correct. So the funds didn't exist until I believe the, and I'm reaching back before my time here a little bit, but uh, to, to the, I think it was created in the mid to late 90s, um, for this purpose at least, maybe someone can correct me, but um, no, we have, we have not had a rate case like this, a proceeding in which we could have requested turns out I think probably we should come in earlier with the earlier request, but you're right, it, it didn't exist, you know, uh, at, at some earlier point, and since it hasn't existed, we have not been in for one of these requests, so we have not asked for one. Uh, I guess I am a little astonished at that. If you have, if you, this $1 million shortfall did not occur overnight. No, and that, I think that, that's why I said we probably should have come in earlier because, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of investment to, to run a telephone company. And it's one of the, I guess, the difficulties of that kind of business. It's very, you know, resource and infrastructure intensive. And, you know, I think it also in the filing, it, it points out that our earnings were like 2%. So, So clearly, you know, this company, I mean, it's our view, we've been under earning for a lot of years. And so, um, you know, we probably should have come in before, but, you know, for whatever reason, the company, uh, you know, waited and instead earned a very low rate of return for that period of time. So, you know, during that time, obviously, the rates remained at this you know, current level. And in our view, the time has come to finally address this situation. Obviously, we have to spend money to 
increase per customer per residential line, correct? Um, are there any planned improvements that the, the residential customers are going to experience? So that's a good question, and Mr. Oster might be the better person to address it, but I think the company is always looking to advance its services and always looking to, for example, deploy facilities into new areas and make sure that customers are getting, you know, both, both from a regulated phone perspective and from uh, an infrastructure perspective, uh, a high-quality state-of-the-art network. So are there any actual plans on the books well, for improvements in there. residential service? Right, so there may be projects that are kind of in the pipeline. To, to speak to. Yeah, it, it's all of our new projects that we do, instead of doing copper cable, we're doing fiber optics. So all of the new subdivisions, we, we deploy fiber optics. We're building, overbuilding what they call a brownfield overbuild. We're pulling the fiber through the old areas of town like that. And then as people sign up, we can put fiber on those, like there's some businesses city, the schools, and stuff like that, some of the locations in town. So we're, we're always trying to improve. We're not, we haven't placed any copper in the ground in probably four or five years. So, so we're always moving towards that. And then you know, part of the, the rate decrease was that 75 cents per touchstone. It, that has been in the tariff since 85. Everywhere else when you sign up for phone service, it's included in your phone service. So it's, you know, that, that was part of the reduction. So if my house is 12 years old, am I ever going to have a stand a chance of having fiber optic run to my house yeah. under this rate increase plan yeah. in the next two years? It depends where you live, I think. Yeah, it depends <laughs> where, you're, where, you're, where you're currently living at. Well, well I'll tell you where I live, and then you move me to the top of the list. How's that? Does that work for you? Works great for me. So I, I guess what I'm really asking for the residential customers, because you know the, the planned increase is not that that great for businesses, at least on the surface, but it's a significant increase per month for residents. And so I guess I'm asking, what are we going to get in our homes for paying almost five dollars a month extra, other than? you guys are going to have a little bit better earnings per share. Yeah, it, it's, that 886 rate has been kind of so low for so many years, you know, since I think 19 Yeah, but I'm pretty used to it. Yeah, I know, 87, uh, where, you know, if anywhere else it's, it's more than 10, 12, 13, 14. But I'm pretty used to 886. I, I mean, look, look, let me just, I guess I can answer the question. There are tangible benefits that the company is going to pursue. Uh, and that's what I'm asking. Right. For. And, and I, I mean, I, I think the, the further deployment of fiber in general is, is the, the, the most tangible benefit I would, I would say, see other than the two reductions that are listed in the application. But there, there is. Yeah, a but going up $5 and coming back down 75 cents, you know, I'm still right. used to that eight right. eighty six a month. No, and I think we, we uh, you know, we appreciate your point. That's why we made again the NUSF request, and that's why we did request a further increase. Um, I guess the bigger picture I just want to make clear is that, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, this this company has to decide to invest money to make sure that the service is available and reliable. And so, you know, part of the goal is to make sure that the company can earn a sufficient amount to percent. Part of the big picture is to make sure that that incentive continues to be in place so that what's been happening here continues to happen because you know the, the people that make the investments in this company they have decisions to make and like any business and we certainly appreciate the business customers that are here i'm sure they have some more considerations and so we just you know part of the situation for us is that we cannot we cannot change these rates we cannot do these things without coming to the commission to ask for it. And, and at some level, if, if the rate of return is low enough, people will not invest. You know? and, and unfortunately, that's the case for any business. And so, you know, 
to some extent, the answer to your question is it's important to the viability of this network that someone continues to code with it. And that's, that's what we're here to do. We want to make sure that you know, we're um, given a sufficient return to make sure that you know, we can continue to pump a lot of money into this company because we've been doing 